Okay, class. I am recording our discussion today so that we can use this as a, a tool uh, in the succeeding days, especially when internet connection is, is scarce so that we can use you know, the lecture videos to also have uh, resource materials for our lessons. So today we are going to be talking about lesson four of unit two, which is uh, going to be discussing effective communication skills. So one of the most important skills that we should learn, especially as we go along with our academic ventures, after senior high school, we are expected to be employable, meaning to say, pwede na tama na So uh, the best way for us to, to indulge or indulge in that kind of opportunity is for us to have effective communication skills that we can present ourselves to possible um, employers no or if not if we go to college and we plan to, to finish courses whether three-year or four-year courses a bachelor's degree then we are able to equip ourselves you know with the um, efficiency of communication that we can use as our primary skill in combating kumbaga, quote and quote combating the professional world and the different opportunities that may come our way so in this lesson class, we are going to identify different barriers that may cause breakdowns in communication. And as part of our previous lessons, these barriers that causes breakdown in communication is what we call noise. So we are going to identify what are these different noises or barriers in communication. We are also going to use various strategies to prevent communication breakdown and demonstrate skills to achieve effective communication. So hopefully we can manifest and put into good practice and use you know, all of these things in order for us to really be equipped with the, our communication or effective communication skills. Here is a question that I would like you to anchor our discussion for this morning or for this day. How can you communicate effectively with others? What is the use of communicating effectively with other people and what are the possible challenges to achieving effective communication. So just like what I have stated, this could be a means or a tool for us to become or for us to maximize no, and take advantage of the opportunities that come our way, whether we decide to work or we decide to, to proceed and, and earn our bachelor's degree. So communicating effectively with other people also helps us to establish good rapport relationships with people that will really catapult no, progress in our day-to-day -day, uh, undertakings. And also, this could help us navigate what could be possibly hindering us from achieving effective communication, whether be it with our families, be it with our loved ones, be it with our friends and people within our community. So by knowing how to communicate effectively and what are the possible uh, barriers of communication, we will be able to understand fully you know, how we can take advantage and make use into the maximum capacity uh, communication skills. Now, let me introduce the different vocabulary words that we are going to be encountering as we go along with our discussion. First, we have the term communication breakdown. Communication breakdown happens when the message is not clear or not clearly understood by the receiver meaning to say the problem is not with the receiver but how the under how the receiver understands or interprets the message for example when melissa saw the florist carrying dandelions instead of carnations she realized there had been a communication breakdown so instead of dandelions and carnations carnation carnation and dandelion is a type of flower class okay so communication that is communication breakdown another word is the word jargon jargon are words or phrases that are used by members of a particular group or trade and may not be understood by outsiders example natalie couldn't understand the jargon her cousins who grew up in north carolina used okay next is the word idioms Idioms are phrases or expressions that convey meaning other than their literal meaning. Example, Joshua used an idiom to express how he felt about Carly guessing the correct answer. You hit the nail on the head, he said. 
So by hitting the nail on the head, di ba, kung mag, literal na to siya meaning, uh, when you hit the nail on the head, it, it goes deeper and deeper to the wood or to asan mo lang siya ginapanday. Okay? So that's also how he characterized Carly's guessing of the answer correctly. Hitting the nail on the head. Shoot sa mga, kung mga. Okay? So that is an example of an idiom. Another is heritage. My apologies. Uh, my flu is not really getting any better. Another word is the word heritage. Heritage is an object, tradition, or identity handed down from one generation to the next. Example, although Marie's grew up in the States, she valued her Filipino heritage greatly. Okay. So these are the different vocabulary words and express or, or terminologies that we are going to be encountering in our discussion. So I hope that you are going to take note of them so that we can understand our lessons better. Okay, now let's begin with the discussion of barriers in communication. Let's first identify what are these possible barriers and how they hinder communication in day-to-day -day exchanges. First, we have the language barriers. This is the most common because these are language barriers manifest when two individuals do not have a common language, when they do not have an when they have an unfamiliar accent, or when they use unfamiliar words or expressions, jargons, and idioms. Example: a Japanese tourist trying to order food from a local fast food diner. Say, for example, kanang local fast food diner is in Cambodia. And the Japanese and the Cambodian doesn't know how to speak English or any other dialect that the two of them can have or can form consensus. So meaning to say the Japanese and the Cambodian fast food diner owner will be having a difficult time you know, in understanding what they are trying to what they are trying to communicate with because then again, uh, they, they don't have a common language, right? And their accents are unfamiliar. And definitely, they're using unfamiliar words from one another. Monang, a communication or language barriers happen because there is a lack of consensus, a lack of understanding, and meaning to say a lack of meeting halfway. Therefore, kung natin language barriers, it is understandable why we have a universally accepted language, which is English. Okay? So meaning to say, it's not really more about discriminating your language if you are Japanese, Filipino, etc., etc. It's more of practicality and common sense. Because if we do not have common language, then ultimately, there will be barriers, language barriers all across us. So it's not really something that we look at as discriminatory. In the Philippines class, we have at least 70 plus languages or dialects. We have Chavacano, we have Islam, a Muslim, we have Ilongo, we have all those, all the Bisaya, Tagalog, we have all, the, all these uh, dialects. If we do not have a common language where we can understand each other, do you think we can live as a one nation? I, I, I really doubt that. So for us, our, our common language in the Philippines is ang ating pamansawika, which is Filipino. So by the use of Filipino, no, we can best communicate with one another, especially when we go to different places in the country. Say, for example, you are from Davao and you went to, to Baguio City. Kind of Baguio City, they have their own dialect no, in, in that particular area. So in order for us to understand one another, we speak Filipino. Of course, give that yung magbisaya, magkasinabot magbisaya. Pero most of the time, we really need to speak Filipino. This happens when, for example, in, in the airport. Before, in college, uh, annually, we went to Baguio. I went to Baguio thrice. And then, pag abot ako na iya, nagbisaya niya po ni. So, may may, and namalit mi og, you know, coffee from somewhere. And then, yan ako kauban, huy, magtagalog ka para maintindihan ka ni ate. May ganin, iyon ang tindera. Okay, ra, sir, bisaya mapod ko. So, kato, nagkasinabot ni, pero kung wala pa, dili siya bisaya. Oh, there will be language barrier in the Philippines. Imagine that the Philippines has a language barrier. Because then again, we need to have common language. Okay? Even with unfamiliar accent or usage of unfamiliar words, there should be considerations as well. Okay? Next is cultural barriers. Cultural barriers are evident when there is difficulty in communication due to differing or lahi-lahi 
to principles, views, and beliefs. This is also applicable to those who are insensitive to other people's heritage. Say for example, karon ang discuss ko. Ang ako ang parlantawan ako mag discuss ko kalanga na kamute ang microphone pero na ay isa sa inyo adya wala na kamute ang microphone. So that is cultural barrier already. Hence, ako reminder to please mute your microphone. Hello. Going back, thank you for that. So cultural barriers happen now because of the different principles that people have, views and beliefs, and this becomes a barrier, especially when there are those who are very insensitive to the heritage of other people. And this is not something that we can take away. This is something that really is happening even up to date. For example, a staunch male traditionalist who disapproves of his daughter's choice to study to be a lawyer instead of waiting to get married and become a housewife. Nagid ba yung mga yun, ani? There are a lot, even Asian countries, who until now are still considering women no, as kanabitaong, I don't want to use the word less than men, but it's, it's really happening that they consider women nga, to become housewives. And women are more capable of a lot of things than most men are no, because of their hard work and determination. Muna nga, there are countries and there are uh, different cultural uh, you know, aspects wherein Lahi-lahi ilang prinsipyo, bahin ani, lahi-lahi ilang parlantaw, no nga ang babae narag sa balay, ang babae narag yun diya mag, mag sa mga anak, homemaker, housewife, kumbaga. And it's not a discrimination for those who choose that way. Labi na if their husbands are providing for them kanang more, it's, it's not really a discrimination, but it's more of a question of do you really insist your belief or view to someone who has different belief and view from you? Say for example, Himong anak gusto gud mamahimong professional gusto magtukod og negosyo gusto mamahimong teacher or in this case gusto mahimong lawyer unya dili ka mo sugot again kindly mute your microphone warning na na ha it's getting very very out of hand already and that should be a no brainer it is the same person Jaya you mute your microphone or else i will kick you out of this class you are interrupting my class twice now. Whether intentional or unintentional, you should be sensitive about it. Warning, huh? Warning. Okay, going back. So when you assert a particular belief or view at a particular person or to someone, then you are being insensitive. Say, for example, imong anak gusto yun mamahimong lawyer. Pero di ka musugot nga muskwela siya lawyer kay lagi Ang imong gusto is maghulat lang siya, nga maminyo siya para mamahimo siya housewife. But then again, a lawyer and a housewife are two very different individuals. A lawyer wants to do something, wants to be in court, wants to help people out. While a housewife is karabitong limited in the capacities of working. Kinaroon siya siyang balay. She doesn't go anywhere else or expected to go anywhere else. Muna class nga, if we try to assert and insist, this kind of practice or or culturally uh, culturally diverse from from other nations then we don't really create harmony hence it becomes barriers because if we allow people to be who they are they we are letting people be accepted no so dili na to ipugos ang mga butang nakita ra malipay we also need to to think and, you know, to, to kumbaga, we also put ourselves on the shoe of the person that we are trying to communicate with. Okay? Next is physical barriers. When we talk about physical barriers, these are hindrances to better communication that is caused by the environmental factors. When we talk about environmental factors, these are external from us, such as noise, lightning, or lighting, distance between the receiver and the speaker. For example, 
two students try to speak to each other over the noise of other people talking and laughing in the cafeteria. So as a environmental factor, it's not necessarily the noise, but it's the cafeteria. Since you're in the cafeteria, so it's expected that when there is a lot of people in the cafeteria, sapa mo diha. Kaya man, in the cafeteria, may ragtaw, so hilo mo diha. But then again, because of the environmental factors that is present at the time and the place that you are in, then that is hugely contributing to physical barriers. Basta when we talk about physical barriers, it always has to do with the environmental factors that is present at that time when the communication process is being uh, done. Another barrier is prejudging. This happens when a person who believes he or she understood what the speaker means even before the message is, take note, completely expressed. Meaning to say, ang gist, wala pa ganyan na story, ang gist sa message yun, aduna na kay tubag. That is something that is wrong with our with our society nowadays. Wala pa ganyan na completely expressed ang mensahe. Aduna ka na perceived understanding or judgment about it. It can also happen when the receiver immediately judges the message as unimportant. Say for example, you received an email from Quipper. Unya karon makita ni mo nga karag dili man di import ah, for example nag message mo classmate sa Quipper. So karon imong ikuan ay classmate ra man di ini. So you deem it as unimportant. So you just simply ignore it. Kaya na ito, important na ito nga message kaya na na ikuwi gisugo nga announcement dito. So because of these kind of uh, judging or prejudging before it is completely expressed, you already have or you immediately have an interpretation about it, it becomes a barrier in communication because there is lack of comprehension of what is really being comp uh, what is really being uh, comprehended or what is real sorry what is really being conveyed to you okay so that is a huge indication of a possible barrier for example a group of male programmers ignoring the instructions of their new supervisor who is a woman even though her new coding methods are actually effective see the disparity here since that they are all male no? and their new supervisor who is a woman told them about an instruction, their prejudgment here is because uh, their, their prejudgment or ignoring their, the instructions of their new supervisor is because she is, she is a woman. That's, that's, why she, that's why these male programmers prejudged her. Ah, babae mo na mas hauta, na mas kabauta. Yun na ito, ang iyahang method is mas actually effective kaysa sa ilang na andan. So prejudging becomes a barrier in communication when there is already judgment before the completion of the expression of the message. Okay? Now, we have information overload. Sir, naan yun na information overload? Kamo ako patubagon ang class. <laughs> diba? When, when we have too much in our plate already in a week, mo reklamo naman tag, sir, mental health, mental health break, information overload, etc., etc. Because information overload happens when one gives too much information at a time or when one takes too much information at a time. So, laigo din nyo, magsige mong tanaw o kanang social media, say for example, Facebook, magsige mong kanang scroll, 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 di ba tanaw mo overload inyong utok, malimta ni mo ang imong lesson. Nga naman, there is too much information at a given time already. Okay, example, a tutor trying to teach a semester's worth of lessons to a student in one sitting. Definitely, the student will not be kind of interested or mabuang imong estudyante. Lali ba yung timuok semester? Yung itunlo sa isa kalingkuran lang. And say, for example, ang isa kalingkuran ninyo is only uh, 10 minutes or it is only one hour. Oh, definitely, you know, it will become very difficult. Okay. So, information overloads happens when there is too much information at a given time. Okay. Next, lack of interest and attention. This becomes a barrier in communication because when a person gives information that does not interest others or a person does not give attention to either the speaker or his or her messages, then there will be a barrier in the communication because you are not interested. Therefore, you will not pay attention 
Kakuanin nyo? For example, a teenager in the back seat putting on earphones and playing music while his father lectures him from the driver's seat. This is commonly happening to us. Nagbiyahe mo. Mo ni Angig Sinayo, nagbiyahe mo sa inyohang family. Karon imong papa nagsig lecture about you know a lot of things your behavior your goals in life etc 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 since you are not interested to listen to that at that given point of time in that given point of scenario or circumstance you put on your earphones and you play music so there is no ignoring you know, the some ignoring the speaker which is giving a message to you which is conveying a message to you because you're not interested then you will not pay attention okay that's that's a given and that that is kana bitaw sumpay ginagduwa says dili mo interesado then dili pod mo maminaw say for example dili mo interesado maminaw sa ako ang lecture so you will not pay attention to me maglakaw-lakaw mo magbuhat mo lain you turn off your you turn off your cameras tapos you do a lot of stuff that's magyoyo lang ko sa screen etc etc so then again Lack of interest always results in lack of attention or there is no paying of attention. Okay? Now, take note, class, that it is important to deal with communication barriers so you can have smooth and effective communication. When we say smooth and effective communication, the root is, or the root understanding is for us to have our, uh, uh, is for us to have comprehension, for us to have consensus. of what the message is really all about. Okay? Now, in order for us to avoid communication breakdown, here are different strategies. First, use time-gaining expressions to have more time to think. Give positive remarks or comments. Be specific. Ask for repetition or clarification. Check your understanding and do not jump to conclusions. Okay? Now, when we talk about When we talk about these strategies in avoiding communication breakdown, tanawa ko nang ako ang kinapabuhat sa inyo ha when I ask you that if you're going to message me, di ba? I always try to to ensure na maklaro ang ako instruction. In that regard, inyo pong maklaro ko kung sa inyo i-communicate sa ako ah. So for example, uh, you are going to Start off by giving a positive remark. Good morning, sir. And then you're going to be very specific who you are, from what class you belong to, unsa imo to you. And then, pag human ako hatag sa kong response or feedback sa mo, you ask for repetition or clarification. And then you check if nasabtan ba ni mo. Okay? And then after you do, you understand it, you end the conversation politely. But you do not jump into conclusions because ultimately, if you jump into conclusions without asking for clarification or or letting your teacher or the someone that you are communicating with repeat the message and you are not able to understand it then ultimately your conclusion is going to be very wrong nakuha so with that regard here are only strategies these are only strategies in avoiding communication breakdown the way we apply it and we use these strategies will eventually determine if we are really able to avoid communication breakdown, okay? Okay. I still have a lot of discussion to make and I still have five minutes. I will try to make the most uh, time, huh? pero dili na ko dali dali on because the Zoom will be ending in five minutes. And as I've said, I am recording this lecture. So let's just continue. No? And if ever we end, then we will transfer to the same link. We'll enter the same link. Okay. Now, let's talk about effective communication. More than just the transmission of information from one person to another, effective communication takes place only when the information is shared and mutually understood. When we say mutually understood, nasabtan sa sender, nasabtan sa receiver. Effective communication class enables you to connect better with others, build and maintain relationships, and express yourself and be fully understood so that is the or these are the ideal goals of effective communication okay so with that we try to talk about strategies in avoiding communication breakdown number one be focused have a specific purpose for speaking or listening if you are the speaker then determine your purpose for speaking 
and clearly express yourself to achieve it. Dili pwede nga, you are not sure kung sa'y purpose ni mo, sa'y mo hapag istorya, and dili po di mo klaro, you express. Meaning to say, you express yourself in order for you to achieve the consensus or the mutual understanding. If you are the, listen, the listener, a certain the speaker's purpose through his or her verbal and nonverbal cues. A certain meaning to say, make sure or make certain what's the purpose of the speaker. With this, we are able to understand also if the speaker is trying to manipulate you, the speaker is trying to kind of play by, by his or her intentions to nakup nakupod kaniya, ana. So you need to know, you need to ascertain the speaker's purpose. How? Through the speaker's verbal and nonverbal cues. Okay? Another strategy is to speak intelligibly. When we speak intelligibly, we use the following. Appropriate speaking volume. Katas un or ka, ka hinay sa mutingo. Ka, ka, loudness of your voice. And the rate at which pace you are speaking. Uh, at which pace, rather, you are speaking. You also talk about good enunciation or the distinctness of the sound of spoken words. We use proper word stress. Ko kanus animo ihatag ang stress anang a word or ano basically it's the proper diction and the correct and acceptable pronunciation. Because if it is not correct, then it will definitely not be acceptable. That's a given. For example, when I hosted a particular event in the city. In Indigo City, I kept on saying uh, peso, peso. And people in the comment section of the FB Live were trying to ridicule me. For just pro santo, it's actually peso. It's not peso or pesos. It's peso. It's the correct pronunciation. But people do not accept it because they do not know that that is the correct pronunciation of that word. So I just tried to re resort to saying peso. Okay, kapoy na magud kayo explain pa rin no. So again, when you speak intelligibly, there should also be, you know, consensus with the people that you're talking to. But when you're talking to your dean or to your to your principal, it's expected that they are also intelligible with what they're talking about. No? Okay. Next, listen with your ears and with your eyes. Remember that nonverbal communication is as important as verbal communication. Pay attention to the speaker's verbal as well as non-verbal cues, and minimize distractions. Block out any form of interference or adjust to different forms of distraction. When you cannot you know, block out these interference, then you adjust to the forms of distraction that is present. Okay, now, in trying to close this class, why are effective communication skills important to being able to navigate through school, career, and interpersonal relationships. I want you to reflect about this one and I want you to think about gano bitaw no? Ganong importante man ang effective communication skills para makatunta mo communicate sa skwelahan, sa tong mga careers, and sa tong mga interpersonal relationships. So I want you to decipher that one and to understand how it is very useful. Okay. Uh, I will be ending the Zoom in less than a minute. So I thank everybody for joining me on this class. And with that, I want you to answer this particular question in your notebooks. Thank you very much and see you next meeting. Thank you, sir.